question from Bawani from last week. Uh, how to cultivate all the parameters? Uh, so trying to develop the parameters, the spiritual perfections, they do require the determination to develop them and also the, the wisdom faculty as well. The, when we want and aspire to develop these paramis, uh, we want them to grow, we want them to get better and to be more full, uh, whether it's the dana parami, generosity, sila, parami, the, the effort, the viriya, the determination, uh, or the wisdom, uh, all of these must be developed and one must be determined uh, to do so. And so we do need to see the benefit of developing these paramis, uh, the benefit to ourselves and the benefit to others. And so it can be just seeing the benefit to ourselves in helping us to be liberated, to be free from suffering, um, but it does require effort. And so we can uh, develop a specific barami like dana barami, the dana, the giving, and we may be quite weak in this, um, but if we try to give more or sacrifice more um, in a way that we do it without harming ourselves or others, uh, like not taking uh, wealth that isn't ours in order to give, to make that uh, dana. Uh, we put effort into it and then our uh, mental strength or, or bar- the strength of that barami grows. And so this is the same father paramis as well, like sila barami, we need to be determined uh, to keep it. And so the Buddha in past lives had developed all these paramis um, to the utmost, to the supreme level where he could uh, develop it through sacrificing uh, his limbs and, and even his life um, to the point where it's completely full. And we say the 30 uh, levels or 30 parami, uh, the paramis. Um, and so this was the Samma Sambuddha. But for monks, novices, lay people, it doesn't have to be to that level. Uh, but we still do have to do it. Um, and so we can develop then the dana, parami, sila, effort, uh, kanti, patience, um, and the other parameters. But we do have to keep training our minds to develop them and do it every day. And then this will grow our strength of, of mind. For instance, the five, we might, we may find ourselves being, uh, maybe a bit weak on keeping the five precepts or we can't do it fully. And so we do need to put effort into that and then try to, to do that. And it does get better when we keep trying. Uh, for instance, uh, there was one uh, lay person who had trouble giving up alcohol and they went to Venerable Ajahn Chah and said that uh, they weren't able to quit this, uh, the alcohol. Um, and Venerable Ajahn Chah said that uh, just don't do it so often and don't uh, take so much every time you do. Uh, and so he kept then uh, practicing with it and uh, by constantly contemplating it, the drawbacks in that uh, particular thing, uh, the different drawbacks, the different various points to it, uh, then one later will be able to do so, to do it. Uh, like uh, this, the precept of killing living beings, um, we contemplate uh, regularly of having metta, loving kindness, goodwill all, all the time. And uh, for us, it may be easy to keep this precept because our livelihood doesn't require us to kill any living beings. Uh, 
but for others whose livelihood does require them to maybe kill whether uh, small or, or larger living beings, animals, uh, in order to support their families, their life, um, then it's harder for them to keep that precept. And in the time of Venerable Ajahn Chah, there was one uh, couple who would uh, kill these frogs and other things to sustain their, their life, uh, livelihood, and they would do so in a group. Uh, but they really wanted to, this, this couple wanted to keep that precept, but it was very difficult for them to do so. And so uh, eventually uh, the man kept the frogs in a uh, bucket of some sort and he didn't want to kill them, but uh, if he just left them there, then the frogs would jump out. And so he had to break their legs in order that they wouldn't escape. Uh, but as he contemplated this uh, every day, uh, then he felt very bad and sorry for them, and so determined then not to do that. And he let them all go, all the frogs go. And uh, when the friends came back and found that all the frogs had been let go of, then uh, they scolded this this uh, couple or the man. Uh, and in the end, he, they were able to stop um, that and keep that precept. Uh, so it does take uh, contemplation, reflection, and effort in trying to do it, and then eventually uh, one will be able to keep all the sila. Um, and other things as well, like developing samadhi, is, is uh, the same. Uh, one has to see the drawbacks in having a mind that is all agitated and all over the place and one then puts in the effort to develop that samadhi, that concentration, uh, to develop wisdom, and uh, then one's samadhi gets better, one's wisdom gets better. And so it doesn't have to be that uh, you have to have such very deep samadhi, but you can also use one's reflection, one's wisdom, in order to develop uh, samadhi, uh, which is... Uh, the, the wisdom faculty that leads uh, samadhi to develop. Uh, and then uh, when the samadhi gets better, then one can then contemplate uh, in order to, to gain understanding. And so we, the, the level, or our level improves uh, like this and it gets better and better. Um, so may you be determined in doing this. So from last week, again from Carlos, is maybe just saying more that he, I'll travel to Bangkok in a couple of weeks and I'll uh, be visiting a monastery or temple in Chinatown where I feel solitude and in peace. I'd like to meditate there. Uh, I know it won't be a proper retreat and I do know my limits and capacities and I sincerely hope it won't be a waste of time. So we have this understanding that the monastery or temple is something that uh, is a part of the Buddhism or the Buddha's dispensation. And so we can see then uh, there's Theravada, Mahayana, uh, and other, other sects. Um, and we see that there's this physical place of practice, which we call a monastery or temple, and it's a place that people uh, public come to build goodness and it's a place that the sangha of monks uh, stay there and they uh, build their barami there, they practice, they do their chanting, bhavana, meditate, learn the, the suttas, the teachings of the Buddha in that physical place. And so you may go there and you sit and you feel peaceful and in solitude, uh, then that is good. And that is also a good opportunity for you as well, uh, going there. Um, and we can see uh, that that is the, the outer monastery, but what we want to build is the monastery on the inside, which is building our own hearts. Uh, the monastery on the outside, we can see with the, the land, the buildings there, 
all the physical structures. Um, that's on the outside, uh, but on the inside, the monastery is building this, uh, the samadhi, building our hearts. And so then everywhere we go, we can have the monastery inside, uh, have the qualities of mindfulness, of sila, of samadhi, of panya, wisdom. Uh, and then we are then practicing uh, the Dhamma wherever we go, wherever we are. And so going on a retreat, there may be a, a, a formal time where we go for retreat. We think of that as three days, five days, seven days. Um, and, but we can practice, uh, any, anywhere. We can practice at home. Uh, and that's a time where we develop ourselves develop our paramis, our spiritual qualities. Uh, and in the end, then we will develop uh, ourselves, our hearts in these, in sila, samadhi and panya. So may you keep practicing uh, onwards. Parami Ajahn, uh, there is like uh, one of uh, ideas that uh, here, uh, the Lord Buddha have like a kind of a curly hair and many People, they believe that as a snail, snail on the head of the Buddha. Is it true or it is just a misconception, Ajahn? So, the, what you see at the Buddha's head there, it's hair that curls to the right. And so this is considered to be a miracle. It's uh, one of the miracles that you can observe with the Buddha's uh, physical appearance. So when the Buddha awakens, when the Buddha arises in the world, then the hair of the Buddha curls to the right and it doesn't grow any longer. It stays the same length, at this short length, and it curls to the right. So this is one of the miracles that happens. And this is something that arises based on the parami, the spiritual virtues that the Lord Buddha has built already in order for his hair to curl to the right and not grow longer like this. But it's something that can look like a, a snail when we see it in a statue. That's why some people are very lazy and don't want to do any work. So Venerable Ajahnanan answered that this is uh, one's character based on causes and conditions that have been built in the past, and they differ from one person to another. We see that some are very lazy in terms of work and don't want to work. This is delusion in the mind that has been cultivated, stored away in the mind like this. We say it's a type of karma that's been built in this way. And this is someone that lacks wisdom, like a student who's lazy in their studies. They don't strive, they don't apply themselves. And there are some students that are very diligent that do apply themselves and work hard and they are able to remember things well. So we see that people are different like this, different in their levels of mindfulness and wisdom. Even there is a case of a, someone born to be a son of a rich family and even that person can be very lazy. So. He starts out without wisdom and then he gets to know friends that are no good. And then those friends take him to go have fun, go out at night, go drinking, go gambling. And this leads to the wealth, his uh, wealth of his family to keep on getting lost and decreasing, decreasing until there's no money left. And actually this individual, this son of a rich family, had sufficient uh, wisdom within his heart to realize Nibbana, to realize enlightenment. <clears throat> and if he started striving at a young age, he could realize Arahantship. If he started striving at a more middle age, he could realize non-returner. If he started striving when he was older, he could realize uh, stream entry. But he didn't strive at all, didn't make any effort, and so he lost his opportunity. And so this is the wisdom of this individual is no good. So when we see that it's like this, like we have uh, 
this kind of loss, this kind of uh, drawback. Therefore, we should set our hearts well in having effort. For instance, setting our hearts on our studies <coughs> in school and applying ourselves in the present moment to do well in our studies in school for all of you there. And when you do this, this is a wealth that follows you into the future and you can use that to support yourself. This is something of value that you can store in your own heart. I'm trying to do Bhutto meditation and during this meditation I feel I want to see something even when my eyes are closed during meditation. Should I try to visualize something like the Buddha image or just observe the craving to want to see something even when my eyes are closed? Thank you. Uh, so you do have to establish your intention rightly in the beginning. Uh, you close your eyes and you meditate on Bhutto. Um, this is in order to restrain the mind not to think of other things. Uh, so it's not to be done in order to see other things except for that. Um, Bhutto itself means uh, the knowing one, the awakened one, the joyous one. Uh, these are the qualities of uh, the Buddha, uh, which the Buddha's mind uh, of this knowing awa uh, awakened and joyous quality. So you establish your mind that you don't want to see anything you just want to have your sati mindfulness to be with uh, the meditation bhutto or the mantra bhutto um, in order to bring the mind to peace. Um, but if you want to use uh, an image uh, to see an image of the Buddha statue, bring up or visualize an image of the Buddha statue with the word Bhutto, then that is okay. It's like adding another level of sati, of mindfulness there. And so you may visualize even the face of the Buddha and then seeing this can bring up a joy, a feeling of fullness uh, in the heart uh, along with the word Bhutto. Uh, if Later, Bhutto disappears, the word Bhutto is gone. Uh, one may just have an image only of the Buddha in one's mind. Um, but it isn't, uh, one's, practi one's practicing in this way, it isn't to see other, something else other than this, because that isn't the path then to peace. How to practice Sakya Diti. So Sakya Diti, uh, this is the Diti, the views that are firmly embedded. Sakya is like firmly embedded. Uh, so these are the, the views within our mind. Uh, and Sakya, it's firm. What is firmly embedded is this uh, seeing it as being me and being mine. Uh, we see rupa, nama, materiality, mentality, or, or phenomena as being me. We take it as a self. We see the five khandas, the aggregates, uh, as being uh, me, as being a self. Uh, and this then uh, is ignorance leading to uh, craving, upadana, clinging, uh, and leading to suffering to arise. Uh, and if we're able to see into not-self, then this is like seeing the true self. Um, if we see things as a self, uh, then this is uh, delusion. Uh, and all people, when they are born into the world, they have this uh, seeing in this way, this wrong view. Um, but then when... The Buddha arises and he teaches 
us to walk the noble eightfold path or we can summarize into the training of uh, sila, samadhi and panya. Uh, like we can, for instance, uh, grab our hand with the other hand and we can feel the bones in the fingers. Uh, or we can grab our head and we can see that there's a, a skull there. Uh, but other people are just the same as us in this way. Uh, but it's about the minds that uh, are supported by this body. Uh, it attaches to this body as being a, a self, as being a me and a mind. And so we do need to put effort into training ourselves, into developing uh, dana, sila and bhavana. Uh, so the Buddha taught for us, uh, if we have... Uh, uh, we need to practice dana because we see the drawbacks in the mind that is uh, selfish, that clings on to things as these material things, as being a self, as being mine. And we see the benefits of sharing and uh, giving that, uh, practicing dana. And then we practice sila and we see the drawbacks of not keeping sila. We see the benefits of a peaceful um, actions and speech uh, that it leads to happiness. And some of us may just get uh, sort of lost or, or contented just with dana and sila because we do have happiness. Um, but we need to train further to develop uh, inner peacefulness um, because we can still see that inside the mind is still agitated and uh, all over the place and still has this me and mine um, or this this view of me and mine and uh, if we don't uh, we we have we haven't yet uh, come to the heartwood of the Dhamma yet then uh, so we have to keep developing then the mind having samadhi having uh, wisdom and uh, developing sati, sampajanya, um, and the, we can develop it through, uh, whether it's uh, using our wisdom faculty to contemplate in order to develop uh, samadhi or peacefulness, uh, or just developing meditation like butto, and then when the mind's peaceful, then contemplating uh, the body. Uh, and so these two ways, uh, lead to us to uh, overcome the sakya ditti, this self-identity view. And there's the three lower fetters, which are the samyok, uh, samyojana, that is the uh, sakya ditti is one of them, self-identity view. The other is the attachment to precepts and practices, and the other is the skeptical doubt. Uh, and so if one is able to uh, cut off these first initial three fetters, uh, then this is like the first uh, checkpoint that one needs to pass through. Um, and one, if one can pass that, then one will have no more than seven lives till uh, full enlightenment, till Nibbana. Um, and so we do need to really gather up all our energies and efforts to get past this uh, checkpoint in order to uh, cut off that sense of self, in order to change these wrong views, uh, this view that it sees things as being a, a me and a mine. Uh, we just have to see that if we have this view of that it is me, that it is a self, we need to contemplate then into not self, that it isn't a me or a mine basically contemplating into impermanence, unsatisfactoriness, not self, and doing this uh, very often, uh, then this will uh, cut off the gilases, the mental defilements, and uh, we'll be able to keep developing until we're able to see the Dhamma or see into rupa, nama, material, mental phenomena as being not a me, not self. Ah. Uh -huh. uh -huh.